Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Cigar BQ. I light up a cigar and I light up the grill and we talk nonsense and I share some of my cooking tips. Maybe you learn something, maybe you don't. I could be wrong, but I'm not. So today on the menu, we got grilled chicken cutlet parmesan and grilled eggplant parmesan. Ah, a little bit old school Italian, a little bit of healthy in one. Boom. And then I'm gonna do uh, garlic bread. I'm gonna toast it right on the grill. And we're gonna have a nice meal, a mangiare, you know what I mean? Ah, forget about it. So, bullet. Lighter. Mm. La Gloria Cubana. This, the outside leaf is busted on this one, but you know what? I don't care. This is a good cigar. Anyway, so here we are. I am going to put the chicken cutlets on. Now I piled the coals up on one side because I want to kind of get some grill marks on these bad boys. And what I did, all I did was uh, for the chicken cutlets, I obviously sliced them. Then I used a brine, which was consisted of uh, sea salt and lemon. And I let that sit for a couple hours at room temperature. And that was it. And the eggplant, all I'm gonna, all I did was throw some salt on it because these are gonna sit in the sauce and and in the mozzarella, and it'll be nicey nice. You know, I could be wrong, but I'm not. So this is cigar barbecue, and we try and uh, make things very special. Mm. Oh man, we got the cutlets looking nice here. I'm gonna check it out. It's got some nice grill marks on them. And they're going to, uh, and these are done. I just wanted to show you what they look like. So this we'll put on our platter. Bada bing, bada boom. And I will put these in a seasoned 10 and a half, I think it's 10 and a quarter or 10 and a half inch skillet made in the USA. So we are wrapping up the chicken cutlets here. Hi, Evan. I'm on. The, I'm recording now, Evan. You got to be quiet. Thank you. That's my son, Evan. I'm not talking to you. Talking to the, my cameras because I'm lonely. Whoa, mother effer. Damn, man, that's hot. Throw in a couple of eggplant. Nice. That's nice. Holy mackerel, that's hot. Okay, so while I uh, get medical attention, I'll let these cook. And behind the scenes, I'll still be smoking this. And don't forget, this is all in real time. There's no retakes. I gotta run around, do all the cameras, and cook in between, turn them on, and run back. It's insane, but it's fun. I love it. Now he wants to go on the trampoline. See, sometimes it's the, we get the, uh, the fire engines, the chainsaws, the pool parties, and now he wants to go on the trampoline. And he, he sees me here doing, can you not make all that noise, Evan, with that thing? Please. I have a cool spot on this side of the grill here. And those eggplant will burn before they cook, so I'm gonna let them sit on this side. I got some nice grill marks on there. Throw the rest on. I don't know if I'm, I don't even really love eggplant, but it's it's a healthier choice. You know, no breading. The 
see what happens. You know, I gotta get ready for the stage. You know, I want to be a pro bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Italian. I gotta be something like that, right? Years ago, I used to have this in uh, in Queens, New York. There was a place, a street called Francis Lewis Boulevard. And there used to be a corner there they called Steroid Corner. And all the juice heads, all the goombas, all the, all walks of life. If you were on juice, you were part of that clique. And all the juice heads were standing there like they were going to wrestle somebody any second. Hey, I'll stop your car with my face. You know, they were all tough guys. And I don't know. I was never into that. So I'm going to turn some of these eggplants over with these giant tongs that I can't even hold. Right, flip that over, turn this one over, nice color on that one. This one I can tell is stick to the grill, it's nice. Turn this one over, beautiful. This is still gonna bake on the grill here, so I'm not worried about sterilization. This thing is hot. These guys are cooking nice, these eggplant. Look at it, they're getting nice and soft and spongy. That's what we want. All right, so we'll let that cook and I'll come back, all right? I'm gonna give my son a wedgie because he's being annoying right now. Take these eggplant off. Add the last of the eggplant on over there. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the skillet. I'm gonna put that on the grill. Oh, we got a dark one here. Woo, that's the, oh, that was daddy's piece. When it gets burned like that, I bite the bullet and I take the daddy's piece. Skillet on the grill. And we're gonna let that take a few minutes to heat up. And we're on the subject of sauce or gravy. Okay, here's my take on that. It's gravy if you cook meats in with your sauce, like pork, some people put all kinds of things in. Sausage. They cook it with meatballs. That becomes a gravy. It's a sauce when you just have tomatoes in there with your seasoning. It's a sauce, tomato sauce. Gravy when there's meat cooked with it. Kabish, okay. I could be wrong, but I'm not. Because this is the barbecue. Put the chicken in there. Nice. We have him, nice fat cell here. You can already hear it sizzling. Grab this guy here if I can pick him up. Okay. Nice, right? What do you think? I'm gonna add the sauce. Whoa, watch out here. Yeah. I'm gonna move this griddle you know, I'm gonna move the, the pan over. I just wanted to get it hot to give it a nice head start. So we put the sauce in here, boom. This, this is gonna be right out of the pan onto the table. Oh, we almost eh? Forget about it, we're all over here, boom. Slow motion, what? Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm gonna cover it. You gotta keep in mind now, when you're, uh, when you have the coals to one side like that, you gotta have your vent on the opposite side, the vent cover, the vent, the cover vent. Because then your heat goes, some of you, a lot of your heat will go right out. So I take the vent, right? Holes on that side, the grill is the, the vent is towards you, and vice versa, and flip flop. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes, I think. Go, that's looking good. Cheese isn't quite there yet, but when I once I get the uh, of the hot food on top of this, all this is gonna melt nice. That's looking really cheesy though. Man, look at this. Nice, cheesy. That looks beautiful. 
is bubbling away. That's so, so nice. <laughs> it brings a tear to my eye. Oh wait, it was a cigar smoke. Sorry. Because I'm gonna spoon this out into a big like um, catering dish, stainless steel. Because Italians like marble, stainless steel, and they wrap their furniture in like this bulletproof plastic rubber that's like made by NASA. It's insane. Everybody sticks to it in the summer. You get up, you, you, your ass cheeks, your ass is gone. It's still, you turn around and you see people's asses stuck to the chairs, right? Forget it, man. Anyway, all right, so I'm gonna attempt to grab the skillet without melting myself. Because this thing is heavy, man. So I'm gonna scrape it in. Nice. That back on the grill. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in the eggplant. I'm gonna put the eggplant in like a. I'm gonna do it like a spiral. So we can get more in there. Maybe get it all in there because this is a lot of food. We cook for the week, right? Who doesn't? Italians love to cook things by the pound, right? So we don't just cook a pot of sauce. You cook like 15 pounds of sauce. Some tomato sauce in here. Not too much, because we can add later. The subject for today's cigar session is canoeing, right? That's when the cigar burns more on one side than the other, right? Cover it up. So you have the canoeing, so why does it happen? There's a few reasons why that can happen. Be poorly humidified cigar, you gotta rotate your stock, right? Could be a windy day, so your bees back. So, could be a windy day. So the wind can also play a role in how the cigar burns. Um, the way you light it could cause canoeing. Another big thing is the way the cigar is filled. The filler may be loose on one side and tighter on the other, so it's the way the cigar is rolled. It could be poorly rolled or in certain spots, a little softer or more aerated in terms of the tobacco being more spaced apart, you get a faster burn. So what do you do? What can you do when it happens? All right, so when it happens, you could do a few things. You can, you can cup it like I do sometimes on a windy day. I'll cup my cigar like this and I'll try and block the wind from hitting the cigar, the cherry. I do the wet finger technique. You can use saliva or you know whatever you're drinking or just keep a little cup of water and you wet the side that's burning fastest. Or another issue is people tend to bite or chew on the end of their cigar, collapsing and compressing some of the tobacco at the cap. Now what happens is the air, when you draw the air into your cigar, the side that's not compressed or chewed on, or chewed as much, the air fl flows through there much freer than on the side that is chewed on and where the tobacco is more compressed. So now you're getting an uneven draw. So the draw, the side that's drawing better will burn hotter or burn faster than the other side also causing canoeing. So what can you do to try and prevent it from happening at all? One is let, let the cigar burn. So most times it straightens itself out. But to prevent it, you make sure you rotate your stock, keep it properly humidified, the cigars. Make sure you light it evenly. Anyway, um, when my son is done passing out on the lawn, we'll come back and we'll take a look at the eggplant, all right? You hear that? You hear that? It's unbelievable. I'll wait, fire engine. Crack myself open a Modelo. Not a bad beer. Well, after all, grilling and smoking a cigar is thirsty work, right? Eggplant. That's looking pretty nice. A little disappointed that the cheese doesn't melt fast enough, but you know what it is? I didn't buy. I didn't buy real mozzarella. I bought the store boy pre-shredded where they put like a wax coating on there or some craziness. I'm gonna spoon these eggplants in here. They are looking really nice. Alright, so now I make garlic bread. I put uh, olive oil, 
um, grated, freshly grated cheese, fresh garlic, a little bit of garlic powder, some black pepper, and oregano. We're gonna let this get some color and then I'm gonna move it to the cool side of the grill just to heat up the bread, make it nice and soft, all right? I'm gonna cover this up real quick. And uh, we're gonna have garlic bread. I just lost my ash, but guess what? It grows back, right? Here in Cigar Barbecue, it happens. Mm. Oh, right. oh yeah. Look at that, nice. Woo! Look at the olive oil bubbling. Camera tongue here. And I'm gonna flip it over. Get the other side with some grill marks. Look at that. It's like a bread porn. <laughs> so my kids like when I do like impressions. Sometimes I'll do SpongeBob. Right, my go like this. Hey, Patrick, what do you got on the barbecue? Oh, I got some garlic bread cooking here, SpongeBob. Wow, that's neat. Can we put a crabby patty on it? So they love that stuff. I'll do my Arnold Schwarzenegger. What do you have here? We are cooking garlic bread on the grill. It's crazy. Look at this. It might be burning. I'll turn it over. Get the grill marks. Look at this. Look at that. And now I will get some color on that side. Just a little color and then I'm going to put the lid on it and let it get soft. I'll give that about five minutes. So by the way, so the grill was at 450 when I was baking the, um, doing the parm. Just so you know. These will look beautiful now, huh? Let's turn them over, yep. Looks nice. All right, so. I'm gonna walk these over for a pretty little platter. I'll make a sandwich out of them, then I cut them when I put them on the cutting board. I'll just cut them into little sections, little edible pieces. Okay, while they cook, I'm gonna say goodbye. This has been another episode of Cigar BQ where I light up a cigar and I light up the grill and I talk about nonsense and I show you what I cook. I'm not a pro, but I make it fun. So I'll see you next time, you rat bastards. <laughs>